Innovator's Compass. How do you get unstuck? Hi, I'm Ella. Over 20 years, I've been an engineer, designer, leader, coach, educator, and parent, and I've worked towards some common, usable, shareable language that gets us unstuck. Usually, that's finding new possibilities in things like who's involved, and together, what's happening and why? What matters most here? What ways are there to do this? Or what's a step to try now and see what happens? These form a powerful compass, how we see different sides of whatever we're doing, its present, future, details, and big picture, to make it better. We could call it our innovator's compass. We can name each part, like our people, observations, principles, ideas, and experiments, to help us use them more. What happens if we do? from preschools to the U.S. Conference on AIDS in big stuff and small stuff. Bigger challenges often just swirl around in our heads or conversations. We can get them out by making a compass on any paper, board, or screen to launch them forward. Let's start with a simple example that involves just one professional making his mornings better. He explored different observations about what's happening and why, real details like what he does, thinks, and feels. On great mornings, he's well-rested, on time, clear on his goals. On less great mornings, his tired mind is full of worries, but no plans for them. Why? His evenings. On good nights, he stopped working early and gotten time to relax. Other nights, he might go to bed late or with unsolved challenges. So he focused on making his evenings better. He could see now that, big picture, what mattered most was getting to be creative and also relaxed and still, knowing he'd done what he could with expectations set for the next day. Those principles helped him see a bigger picture of different ideas to help. He combined two ideas, blocking time to go to the gym and having a partner to make sure he went. He chose a small experiment with real details so he'd do it. He'd call his friend that Monday, suggest 7 p.m. gym times, and see what happened. What time would work? Would they go or not, and why? Would he get relaxed and creative? Would he have great mornings? He found he also needed a real time block for his competing principle, getting creative on some challenges and listing the rest for tomorrow. He could even use a little compass to help turn worries into just enough useful observations, principles, ideas, or experiments to feel unstuck. At the U.S. and California conferences on AIDS, attendees considered how to support people with different needs. This group focused on older adults. The group started with what they know, and don't, about people in older adults' lives and what's happening for them when they're most and least engaged in their care. They recognize new principles that might matter to older adults about their care, ideas for making that difference, and most importantly, that their first step was to explore these questions with older adults and caregivers back home. At a business innovation conference, people each explored a business challenge of their own with a compass and coached each other to find new possibilities in it. They used a second compass to reflect on their learning experience and make plans to keep using it. At our daughter's preschool, Compass pieces help unstick conflicts. Working through a compass with a grown-up is handy for challenges like our daughter's drop-offs, which were hard for her and her parents and teachers too. We also listen to great things happening. She's growing up in many ways. She loves her parents. What mattered most to her was time with each parent. We committed to specific experiments around her two ideas, dates and drop-offs with different parents, and 10 kisses and hugs from each of them in the morning. She reminded us to add an observation each day that went well. And each day did, except Mondays. What finally prevented the Monday meltdown was briefly inviting her to remember what mattered most to everyone and offer a different idea if she wanted. She'd usually then be happy with her 10 big kisses and hugs. Think of this as the common compass in the corner of lots of great maps out there for making different things better. We just explored in a careful way many maps do. Understand what's happening in matters before jumping to ideas. Sometimes we've got an idea. We can decide to step back a bit, or as other maps suggest, go forward trying small experiments first, planning to learn and change it as we go. Or we just try things and see what happens, with a bigger aha now and then. After a while, we find we're unconsciously using these more. We more often turn frustrations like, this isn't working, into observations. This isn't working and see why, or a useful idea, person to help, or something else that matters more right now. Or when we're stepping into an important situation without time to plan, we remember to briefly consider what matters most, a principle or two to guide our next steps.
If you like acronyms, Poppy isn't great, but popping out of your stuck is. People's stories from home, school, and work have been shared on the hashtag Innovators Compass and at innovatorscompass.org. The website also has more background, tips for groups and going deeper, and different formats, from an app to slides to printable posters, worksheets, bookmarks, signs, and games that make these five questions accessible for different people and moments. Years have gone into these tools, but I just ask that you credit them so others can find them and email or tweet your experiences for me and maybe others to learn from. Go have fun, or at least go forward exploring any challenge.